Well, hey there, dear viewers. Now, back in 2014, I was a little bit too young to subscribe to Scorn's Kickstarter, and so I didn't get access to the new prologue that came out a few days ago, and so I've had to settle with watching a ton of videos of it on YouTube. But, as the Scorn developers said, each area has its own story, and I've been pondering over a lot of the footage that I've seen for the new Scorn prologue, and mind you, that machine is, geez, this machine is a lot more brutal than I thought it would be. Anyway, I formulated a few theories about what's actually going on around here, which I'd like to share with you people, my dear viewers. And of course, I think the first should go to uh, the fan favourite from way back in the alpha trailer, Mold Man. Although, it seems now more appropriate to call them the Mold People, because there's quite a lot of them. And Mold Man appears to be, you know, a specifically defective one that you can either cruelly leave him behind to starve to death, or tear his limbs off to use instead. Uh, but the interesting thing is, you know, who are these people? What are they? What are they used for? And I think Transhumanist Gamer, who's a YouTuber that covers a lot of Scorn theories, I think he had a good take on this when he said that this, uh, this white fluid substance, right? You know, when the cum chalice explodes, and it does look like the bodies of all the mold people, like, it looks like they're like a lower class, right? They're just a lower class workers that do seem to be factory produced for menial jobs. And then uh, once you know they've either done with their usefulness or they die or whatever, they just seem to be grounded up and turned into this fuel. I think that is a, a pretty reasonable theory. And more interesting yet, though, is the sexual dimorphism, right? You see, some of them are clearly female and some of them are clearly male. But the thing about sexual dimorphism indicates that the mold people reproduce sexually, which gives us an idea of their history and what they may have been before they were, you know, this. Either, of course, they have normal sexual reproduction and they are then put into these pods for storage, or it could be that they were once something else that was, you know, then taken and turned into this sort of thing. Uh, like, turned into these worker drones, because the sexual reproduction would not exist, like, the sexual dimorphism wouldn't exist unless there was a purpose that they would have to, you know, having it. Like, if they must have been created, at least if they were created, created from something that was, you know, sexually dimorphic and reproduced sexually. So, in many ways, it, uh, uh, well, it opens up a lot more questions than it answers, especially with these, like, sites that look like the film, some fucking, like, mass genocide. As Transhumanist Gamer points out, it looks like one of the things from the Holocaust. I mean, when I first saw it, I first associated with, it, like, Bixinski rather than the Holocaust, but, you know, yeah, each to our own, I suppose. But, Phil Flanagan, you may be asking, what is your, you know, theory on this? Because I have a very good theory that looks more onto the suggestions behind the very opening, right? The, the bit where we see a flash and there's all these people and they're trying to get to this one, night like, single building, it appears. And, well, there are a few suggestions we could take away from this, and I want to actually cover them. The first, and, you know, most simple one, is that the Scorn guy we play as is not the first to have traveled these halls and that there are many old like scorn people who have woken up in this derelict place and that they're all trying to get to this single place now why they're trying to get to it is your know, mystery right though what this would suggest is we're not exactly and like entirely alone as we may think which is an interesting thought that many scorn people have woken up and they're all trying to get to this point now 
naturally the question is why is if you know there are still some parts of this facility the civilization that are functioning causing them to wake up though i have a few other theories in mind right there is one other uh, suggestion i guess that all these like things that we're seeing from the start is actually all just the same scorn guy it's just that you know we keep we've just kind of followed his journey to this point it's all the same guy but that would kind of leave a black hole as to well why is it suggested that you know we wake up entirely fresh at least by the narrator from when the game actually starts and you know why is it that we don't have any of the equipment that everyone else does it like one of the big reasons you can see that the people in the opening are not the same as the guy that you play as in the prologue is because of the wrist keys that they have and so of course i have a few theories i think that we can all encompass these theories into what i call you know the hive mind theory and i'll explain why in a minute the first that comes under this is that they are in fact all the same scorn guy all of these except every time he dies something bad happens because we always see like something bad happening to them at the end of these like, little clips is i think it might actually all be the same scorn guy but when he dies he gets a new he's like animated into a new body to continue his journey to finally get to this building which is probably going to be one like the last points in the game you get to which is you know an interesting thought that when they die they just put into a new body and if this is true then we'll probably see it in a game mechanic maybe like as in this theory will be vindicated should we see it that you know if you die in the game then you wake in a new body something along those lines right we'll prove whether my theory there is correct but the other theory which could go along with this but the other hive mind theory I have is that the hive mind is not Scorn Guy himself, but rather the entire facility you're in. Now, what you'll notice is that it's clearly biomechanical. There is biology mixed in with the technology, right? And so I have a theory that the entire facility itself is alive. And I mean, and the Scorn devs described the environment as a character in of itself. And this is usually used metaphorically, but I think in this case we could probably consider it quite literally. Like, it makes sense that you would, if you have biological process, because at least certain parts of it are alive, you have all this uh, red stuff growing around, and we'll get onto that in a minute, right? So it makes sense that at least certain parts of it are alive, but it makes sense that I feel like you would need some sort of mechanical computing systems. Um, there is a system called wetware in which they use neurons of a living creature as a computer system and that could be what's going here but that would then bring the question of is the facility conscious is it awake does it know what's going on which i mean it might do like it could be that this facility is entirely awake and it's dying in a way like you see all this red stuff around because what we've seen around is that there are two forms of biological flesh and i brought this up in my other video about what makes scorn so interesting is that you can see that there's a much neater sort of brownish type flesh that's actually properly woven into it that seems like a part of it but then there is this red web as it's described like kind of like the red weed from the war of the worlds where it's just infesting everything is growing somewhat like a cancer and rather deteriorating the place destroying it it could be that the entire facility is alive and you know it's dying and it is like awakening these scorn fellows like you know one dies or while it wakes another to try to get to this place in some sort of effort to save it i mean like because if we look at those Chucku creatures, like the Chukus, these are clearly an invasive species that aren't supposed to be here. They are clearly, like, forming these tendrils that are, like, you know, destroying the place. Like, they are supposed to be there, but the river parts that then clearly are, I think. And I feel that a lot of it's going to relate to this giant monstrosity that we saw in some of the more recent trailers. 
But the big question that I don't think anyone has an answer for, and I also don't have an answer for that, is this, why has everything collapsed? Why has it all been just destroyed? Why is it, why has everything that these people created come to ruination? And this is the big question that, yeah, I think we're gonna have to, you know, look at deeper when the game comes out. When the game comes out, of course, I'll do a let's play of it. I'll give actually insightful takes and talk about theories during it. And I might make a separate video about, you know, my theories after I play it. Like, this is something that I do deeply want to understand. And I want to know exactly what it is that's happening here and why this has all ended up the way that it has. So when I do my playthrough of it, I'll be making a few theory videos and all about it and my thoughts on the game in general. And, you know, since I did promise this, a full playthrough of the game, of course, which, you know, hopefully we'll be getting out uh, for Halloween. And of course, if any of you have any theories or ideas about this that you want to share, then be sure to share them down in the comments. I hope you've had a lot of fun enjoying all the Scorn content that's been coming out soon, and I hope a lot of you will enjoy playing it when the game comes out. But with that, I've got to say goodbye, dear viewers, and I'll catch you next time.